follow the marquee and come to the Monday matinee. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. Hi there, and welcome to the Sonic Society episode 484. I'm your genial host, David Alt. And I'm your co-genial host, Jack Ward. Uh, is co-genial a word? Totally is. Apparently, I looked it up. <laughs> right. Well, another week is upon us. And more amazing audio drama. So what's featured for tonight? Well, David, this week we have a rated R show called Sander Cobb and a rated G show from the newly rejuvenated Bells in the Bad Free. Does that mean we split the difference and have a rated PG show? Uh, that's not how it works, unfortunately. However, if you have kids listening, I recommend we start with John Bell. And for those who don't mind swears and rough topics, stick around for Sander Cobb by Stephen Cardinal and Oral Traditions right here on the Sonic Society. Mm, oral. This is All Stuff Considered on Natural Public Radio. I'm your host, Robert Seagull. Our first story. In the world of podcasting, it's unusual when a podcast takes a hiatus for a long time, then returns. It's even more unusual for it to take a second hiatus after its short return. With this story, here's Oswald Snootflute. Thank you, Bob. That's Mr. Seagull. I am here at the Belfry, where John Bell produces the podcast, Bats in the Belfry. No, no, that's, that's, that's not right. So you don't produce this podcast? Yes, I do produce the podcast. Are you ashamed of the podcast? No, 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 the name is wrong. Oh, you're ashamed of the name. No, I'm not ashamed of the name, it's just the wrong name. Then you should have named it something else. I did, I named it something else. Oh, so the podcast is called Something Else. Yes, yes. We are speaking with John Bell, the producer of the podcast, Something Something else. No, 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 no. The name of the podcast is Bells in the Bat Free. Bats in the Bell Free. Bells in the Bat Free. That doesn't make sense. It's a play on words. I transpose the sounds from Bats in the Bell Free to Bells in the Bat Free, because, see, my name is, is John Bell. Mm hmm. Why did you do this? Well, I just thought it was kind of, you know, funny and catchy. Mm hmm. So. It's an allegory? I don't know if this owl you speak of is gory or not. That's just the name of the show. Mm -hmm. Bells in the Bat Free. That's Mm -hmm. just what I'm stuck with. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you understand? Not at all. Let's start over. That would probably be best, Jess. I talked with John Bell in his plush office in the Bell Free. Bat Free. Bat Free. Bat Free, yes. What is a Bat Free? Well, this is the bat free. This is where I work. I'm not familiar with the word. Work? Bat free. I made it up. I told you earlier that... So your podcast is about making up words. No, 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 no. It's about... Make up a word for us right now. What? No, an original word. You want me to make up a word right now? Mm Mm-hmm. That would be very interesting. All right. Uh, you, sir, are a gluff snored. Mm Mm-hmm. That is very interesting. What is the definition? I just make them up. You can define them. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So, you call this the bat free? Yes, yes, I do. Then let's start again. Yes, yes, let's. What a glove snort. I talked with John Bell in his plush office. So, what did you want to know? To begin with, why do you have so many plush animals in your office? Uh, actually, these aren't plush animals. These are cowlets. Mm Mm-hmm. You see, we're renovating the new bat free, and we didn't have a place to put the cowlets yet, so they wound up in my office. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's get to the point. Why have you been away from the Bat Free for a month? I had some family business stuff I had to take care of. I see. So you belong to a crime family. No, that's not what I... And you were in hiding for a month. I wasn't hiding. I see. How did you get out? Did you make bail, or did your lawyer find a technicality? I I wasn't in jail. I was... I was traveling across country to take care of... Who, Mr. Bell? Who were you supposed to take care of? 
And did you? What are you inferring? I'm not inferring anything, Mr. Bell. Well, it sure sounds. I'm implying. Huh? The speaker implies. The listener infers. Gee, you're snooty. Only my friends call me snooty, Mr. Bell. Look, can we get this over with? I've got a lot of work to do. Why have you not released a new podcast, Mr. Bell? Well, for one thing, I keep getting interrupted by guys like... Tell me more about these cowlets. Uh, okay. Are they a metaphor? A metaphor what? What do they represent? Uh, a human huge mess, usually. Are they a metaphor for the chaos in your life? Or a metaphor for your failures, perhaps? You sure like metaphors. I never a metaphor I didn't like. You were just waiting to say that, weren't you? Would you say your show is existential? Well, it does exist. And there is a stench to it. <laughs> Was that a member of your cast? No, that's one of the guys working on the bat free, but he's going to be in a cast if he doesn't wise up. Me wise up? You chose the colors for these walls? Yeah. Will you just get back to work, please? Are you saying that this is the color these walls are going to remain? Oh, don't you start, too. <laughs> What? 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 Mr. Bell, Mr. All the way. (laughs) What is it, Arnie? What do you need? It's actually what you need, Mr. Bell. Peace and quiet? Well, I can get you some peace, Mr. Bell, but we're out of quiet. How about experience? My conversation with Mr. Bell was interrupted by a strange little man with an impediment. I don't have an impediment. Of course not. I have a mental instrument. You want one? Not right now, Arnie. The strange man seemed to speak in malapropisms. Malaprop? Malaprop? Who would I malaprop to? We don't even have any props. We're an audio show. Arnie, may I introduce Oswald Snoot Flute? Why? Do you think that's the kind of thing you might do all of a sudden? Well, I mean, just spontaneously like that? Arnie, this is Oswald Snoot Flute sitting right here. He's with NPR. NPR? Yes. No pickers reformed? No. Nude people revolting? No. Never plant radishes? No. Nasty peacocks regurgitating? No. Natural public radio? Oh. I liked mine better. I'm trying to capture a normal day in Mr. Bell's life. (laughs) Normal. If you two don't mind, just go about your business and I'll make commentary. Well, okay. I suppose. After all, what What could could possibly possibly go go wrong? wrong? Then don't mind me. Carry on. All right. Please. So, Arnie, what is it that we... I'll sit here silent. Yeah. What is it that we need you to... won't know I'm here. What do we need, Arnie? Besides the peas and asparagus? Yes. We need to pick up some building materials, Mr. Bell. There's some things we're running short on. Even Mr. Bell's associates think the podcast will have a short run. That isn't what he... Mr. He's... Bell, our cars are all blocked in by the construction guys, so we may have to call a cab. Well, we could always call Uber. Yeah, we could do that. No, wait a minute. Mr. Bell, a car's not going to be big enough for what we need. We're going to have to get a pickup truck. Oh, that means we're going to have to call... Goober. Right. I have my Goober app here, Mr. Bell. Let me push it. Thank you for choosing Goober. We are contacting a pickup truck to get to you as quickly and safely as possible. Because at Goober, we put safety first, or somewhere down the list. Please keep in mind that when you use Goober, you just might be riding with another person, or chickens, or other livestock. Riding in the bed of a truck is just fine. Oh, boy. But it's also $2 extra. And worth it. In a few minutes, you're going to need to be watching out for your goober driver. And I mean, watch out. Most our trucks ain't got no brakes. What? Thank you for choosing Goober, where your desperate need for transportation is our meal ticket. And speaking of tickets, if your Goober driver gets one, you are the one that's going to pay for it. At Goober, we have found that most of the time, if our drivers are ticketed, it's usually because the keg in the back has overturned, which tends to freak out our passengers and attract attention of law enforcement. So, yeah, it's your fault. That seems fair. Just remember, if you see some blue lights, be cool. And everyone will timely reach their destination. Have a good day and good luck. Not that you'll need it, but, you know, just in case. <laughs> All right, let's keep our eyes peeled for... Oh, hop in, mister! Oh, we're in hot pursuit! Driver, I think a wheel just came off. Doesn't this just ain't our day? Uh, you want to look out for that police car that's heading right towards the <laughs> Here we are at Home Depot. Uh, thanks for the ride, Mr. Goober driver. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Probably a good idea. Oh, sir, and welcome to Home Despot. Don't you mean Home Depot? You've never met my boss. Hello. Ah, great, a comedian. Okay, we need some supplies, please. Certainly, what do you need? Do you have shingles? Ah, no, calamine lotion took care of that. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. 
Mr. Bell was embarrassed to meet a person whose rapid-fire delivery and keen sense of humor put his to shame. I am not! Ooh, do I see a green-eyed monster? Oh, you're probably looking at my wife! <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Mr. Bell. Look, I need some supplies, and I'm running out of time. What do you think? This is the seasoning department? <laughs> Get some rosemary instead! Did you call me? No, Rosemary, false alarm. She's a real sage. <laughs> ah, walk a a ding dong The stranger's wit was putting Mr. Bell ill at ease. No, he's not! We're fooling around, Mr. Bell. We gotta get back to the battery. I didn't mean to show you up, sir. Go ahead and tell me what you need, and I'll find it for you. And no stupid jokes? I promise I told my last joke. If I'm lying, I'm dying. All right. And I don't mean Easter eggs. I heard that. All right, here's our list. First, we need screwdrivers. At this point, Mr. Bell summoned the barkeep for some drinks. And some wrenches, assorted sizes. Bring on the winches, he said. And I know I'm going to need a caulk gun. He demanded a firearm to get rid of somebody named Caulk. And we'll need some large garbage bags. His plans included the disposal of the bodies. What are you blathering about over there? Just remarking on your efficiency, Mr. Bell. All right, Arnie, have I asked for everything that we need? I think so, Mr. Bell. Before I make sure, I give Brad a call back at the bat for you and see if there's anything we forgot. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let me give him a buzz. I know I can do this. There's no problem that I, ace salesman and public relations director for the battery, can't accomplish if I put my mind to it. Therefore, there must be a way... Ah, yes, yes, yes. I can put this red queen on this black king and then move this jack over. <laughs> okay, now let's see what card is next here. Oh man, that's Mr. Bell calling me. And here I am in the darkest, deepest recesses of the underground bat free and I still got a cell signal. What's that all about? Oh. Well, I complained long enough and it went to uh, the answering thingy. <laughs> There's a problem that took care of itself. Okay, let's see here. Oh, oh, this eight, this eight, this black eight. What can I do with that? Well, they're on the nine of diamonds. How's that? The eight of clubs will go on the nine of diamonds. Don't you see that? Eight of, uh, clubs, clubs. Happy dog feet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, I'll put it there. Hey, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> You know, I really thought I was alone down here. Oh, no, no, no. You're never alone, pal. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And why would that be? Because there's millions of us. Millions, yes, millions of you, yes. Millions of, um... What are you? What are we, gang? We're roaches. Yeah, that's what we are. We're roaches. <laughs> yeah, but you can talk, which means that if you can talk, you'd have to be some sort of, well, I don't know, genetically mutated roaches. <laughs> We're genetically mutated roaches. I had a really bad feeling you were going to say that. Yeah, a lot of stuff was going on down here with the uh, previous inhabitants. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the pre- uh, previous, uh, the... Um... Last owner. Yeah, that, that's the person. So are you wondering why we're hanging around? No, 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 because if I ask, you'd say it's something about uh, world domination. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah that, that's basically it, uh, world domination, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, death to humans, the whole thing. Yeah, that's a uh, catchy slogan there. Yep, yep, yeah, sure yeah. is, uh, uh-huh. yes. That's the plan. I see. So, um, hmm? are you going to, um, uh, um, you know... What? Include me in that, since I'm human? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're worried about there. Yeah, yeah, well, well, well we were gonna, you know, come up here and, uh, you know, dismember you or something, uh, but uh, then we heard that you were uh, sell advertising for a podcast. Oh, 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 I see, and you think that I could be helpful in your cause because uh, I, I sell podcasting time. No, no, that's, that's not it at all. We, uh, dirty, slimy roaches decided not to bump you off because of, uh, well, professional courtesy. That's the nicest thing anybody's ever done for me. However, in return, we expect you to, uh, you know, cooperate with us. Be our inside guy with the humans, you understand? Are you asking me to betray my fellow humans? Well, uh... Without even telling me how much I'd make for it? Good point there. How does uh, this amount on this slip of paper strike you? I don't know what kind of person you think I am, but... Death to humans! <laughs> Let's hear it, roaches! You have been listening to Belgium of Battery, episode number 146. 
Oral Tradition presents Sander Cobb. This production contains strong language and violence and would likely be rated R, suitable for mature audiences only. T-bone, medium rare, baked potato with sour cream. Oh, uh, chef says he's out of asparagus, so he had to substitute broccoli. <laughs> they don't want to smell my piss. He was able to get you the wine you wanted, though, the Bordeaux. It's the little things. Pull up a chair. Oh, I shouldn't. Sit. Got an extra glass? No, I can't anyway. Not when I'm working. Your loss. This is the good stuff. <laughs> Guess you'll be glad to get rid of that cough. Yeah, well... You worried? Worried? I mean, you don't look worried. I wasn't sure. Nah, been waiting on this for a long time. Saw it coming. Hell no. Not in the beginning, at least. Eventually, though. Regrets? What's the point? Look, anytime you start something, you never really know where you're going to end up. When you look back, though, the path is clear as day. Like there was no other choice. Fate, then? There were a couple spots. Only a couple. When things could have gone different. Sounds like a regret. So, uh, what happened? They must have told you already. I'd rather hear it from you, Mr. Cobb. It was in East Nowhere, Nebraska. 99. Sixty minutes, folks. Grab some food, use the facilities. We leave in an hour. It flew in right through the screen door. Ted started screaming, and I went and grabbed. I him. wasn't screaming. You were screaming. Get the broom. Get something. I'm just trying to get your attention. You got everyone's. <laughs> Take a seat, honey, oh, or grab a booth. Uh, it don't matter. This one taken. No, 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 that's just Ted's junk. He'll move it. Move it, Ted. Sure, kid, have a set. Get him some coffee, will you? Looks like one of them zombies. You want a coffee, honey? Maybe a cola. Hmm? Nice and cold. Coffee's fine. So does a kid's drink. Sure thing, mister. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you heading? West. You're going in the right direction, then. That bus is westbound. Ted, give him a break. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I didn't mean nothing. Just give him a little ribbon. He can take it, can't you? Ma'am, can I get one of them sandwiches? Oh, sure thing, hon. So what's out west? I don't know. People? Different people. A job, maybe. <laughs> they got different people right here. None more different than Ted here. We even got jobs. Eh, not a lot, maybe, but good work. Honest, hard work under the sun. Kind of work that'll make you a man. What do you do? See that wheat field on the way into town? Which one? The last hour was like all one big wheat field. That's the one. That's mine. I work it. Been working it my whole life. Gonna be buried in it someday. God willing. Bank willing. Got a name, son? Sander. Sander Cobb. Here. Yeah. Welcome, sir. Sorry I'm late. The, the car again. You know, if that lazy father of yours would just have... I, I know, I know. Oh. oh. 
Hi. Hi. Kelly, uh, this is Mr. Cobb. He wants one of them uh, special sandwiches. You take care of that, will you? Mr. Cobb? Huh? Like, like corn? Like the baseball guy. Never heard of him. My grandpa used to talk about him. Said he was great. Kind of an asshole, though. Huh? Uh Oh, sorry. My parents used to swear a lot. Guess I picked up a bad habit. Habits are made to be broken. I thought that was rules. Ted here was trying to convince Mr. Cobb to stay around for a bit. I think he was about to just offer him some work on the farm. Could use a strong body. I'm thinking you could use something, too. Something we got. What's that? Piece. A piece of what? How about a piece of pie to go with that sandwich? Connie makes a kick-ass... I mean, real good strawberry rhubarb pie. Whenever you're running from, kid, you just got to carry it with you. Don't mind Ted. He fancies himself one of them armchair psychiatrists. Uh-huh. That uh, pie sounds good. What the? Hey, can someone fill that up and wash the windshield? I just drove through the biggest fucking cloud of bugs I ever seen. Clay will be out in a minute. You got a restroom I can use? I got bug shit in my hair. Right back there. Is there a key? Heck, there ain't even a door. Just pull the curtain shut, honey. No one will bother you. Hey, give me a couple of sandwiches and a couple of sodas for the road, huh? We're on a tight schedule. Want to make Cali by Friday. You going to California? Oh, you're growing pretty smart around here. Yeah, California. I'm not from around here. Just taking the bus west. The bus? Well, that's gotta suck. Yeah, well. Look, if you're going to Cali, you need to arrive in style. Cadillac style, man. Top down and head up. Bus ticket's cheaper. Ha! <laughs> Cheap my ass. If you got money for gas, you can ride with us. I, I don't know. I think the toilet's broke. I'll have Clay look at it. This kid's heading to Cali, too. I told him he could ride with us. Oh, hey, yeah. That'd be cool. My stuff's on the bus already. Flynn will get it for you, won't you, baby? Yeah. Here are your sandwiches and sodas. That's eight fifty. Keep the change. Come on, kid. The road's calling. Got your pie for you, Ty. Uh, um... You're welcome to stay on with us a bit. There'll be other buses if you change your mind. Can I get that pie to go? Right outside of Baltimore. I had a cousin who lived somewhere around there, I think. She said it was pretty rough. There were definitely some neighborhoods I wouldn't go through even in daylight. Mine wasn't that bad, though. We still had to learn to fight, though. There's nothing like a strong man. Ain't that right, baby? What? I said you're a strong man. You bet your ass. He don't take shit from nobody. Me neither. Not anymore. That why you left. Someone giving you shit. You ain't got to talk about it. I just figured we got a lot of driving ahead of us. May as well get to know each other, you know? My dad used to beat the shit out of us. Who's us? Me and my mom. What an asshole. Yeah. I tried to get her to come with me, leave him behind. Won't budge, huh? It's scary. And you just left her? Man, sometimes you got to stand up and put some people in their place. Ain't no one gonna get away with something like that with me. So, what's in California? Opportunity, man. Straight up opportunity. Flynn knows a guy in the import business. You know all that cheap Chinese stuff. Hey, it's quality merch. You don't deal with that low-end sweatshop shit. I told you. Anyway, says we can make a fortune. You got a job lined up out there? Slow down, girl. We're giving this kid a ride, not a job. Anyone who abandons his own mother. I didn't abandon. I tried to get her to leave. To see reason she... That is kind of chicken. Leaving her alone. Defenseless. What do you know about it? Look, let's just drive, huh? Let's just drive, baby. Get in the six. It's time to go. 
I need somewhere to freshen up, baby. How about you, kid? You need to take a piss, too? Hey! Nah, I'm good. Bladder like a suitcase, huh? So? Okay, next gas station. Thanks. Kid, how about you take the wheel for a bit? I want to get some more miles in tonight and I'm beat. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll switch out of the station. There's a Texaco up ahead. How do you know that? I can read a freaking sign. What sign? The freaking sign that said Texaco up ahead. Just take the exit. Don't pop off at me. Sorry, baby. I just gotta go. Fine. I'm gonna run in and grab some smokes and a couple drinks. I think you just missed them. There's another entrance on the backside. Yeah, right. Take the wheel, kid. Don't fuck around. I want to be on the road lickety-split. I got it. Come on! I think you popped the trunk. Just get up front, kid. All right, kid, step on it. What happened? Do what I told you. What's the rush? Just drive! Flynn! Look, kid, the problem with some of these podunk gas stations is they can't get good help. They get these unstable bastards. This one was whacked. What do you mean, whacked? Drugs, probably. All over these small towns. Uh, We should write a letter to his manager. Yeah, that's a good idea. Next motel we stop in, you can write a letter. So that's why I'm driving 90? This baby will do a buck ten easy. Only one way to find out. I'm going next door for some beer. Why don't you turn in? Guess I can sleep in the car. I've slept in worse places. You're not going to sleep yet. A lot of driving. Yeah. Flynn will probably want you to drive in the morning. You two married? Hell no. Not yet, anyway. Maybe someday. How did you... This 20 questions. Never mind. He was a bouncer at a club I danced at. I guess one night I had too much to drink and he took me home. So he... So he let me sleep it off. I thanked him the next night. When he got fired a couple weeks later for sleeping with the dancer, we decided to head to California. And here you are. Yeah. Kind of feels good to start a new life, you know? Uh Uh-huh. So... Earlier. Earlier than what? The gas station. Uh, That guy was high on that. I saw the gun. What? Flynn was hiding it in his jacket when he got in. I saw it. You robbed that place, didn't you? Is that what you guys do? We didn't have shit when we left Jersey. Things got tight. We didn't plan. And so you made me your getaway driver. An accomplice. No! Flynn... Jesus. Come on, it ain't that bad. You don't know. So now what? You gonna turn us in? Look, I... And to think I was starting to like you. You... I mean, you're kind of cute and smarter than Flynn. Maybe, uh... I don't... Am I interrupting something? Hey, baby, we were just talking, you know. About what? Just where we come from. Did you steal that beer? What? Fuck off. And you... Ah! Get the fuck in the room. Kid, I suggest you get a good night's sleep, because tomorrow you're on your own. What the fuck did you tell him? Nothing! Nothing! You keep your mouth shut! What the hell? What are you doing, kid? I'm gonna drive. Didn't you hear me last night? Yeah. Thing is, I'm going to California. So are you. I want in. In? Yeah. I can handle a gun and I can handle this car. You dragged me into this. I'm staying. Look. No. You look. I'm in charge of my own destiny. Now get in. If we were anywhere less podunk than this, you'd have gotten nabbed at the store last night. You know they gotta have our faces all over the place. We took out a security camera first. We ain't that stupid. Well, then, your descriptions at least. Unless you killed the kid behind... No, we didn't kill no one. Good. 
I'm in. Come on, baby. Let's go. He's right. Let's just get to Cali, huh? All right, fine. But if you screw up even once, kid... You'll beat me up, or... Don't. Watch it, kid. All right, let's go. Where to? You want in? Fine, you're in. We need to make a bigger score before we go to Vegas, a little spending money. So? I checked the yellow pages last night. There's a fast food joint on the way out of town. Breakfast? Not quite. Come on, guys! Come on! Fuck! What the hell are you... Hurry up! What the... Son of a... Stop! Police! Run! What are you doing? Oh, damn it! Fuck! Hope! Hang on! Holy shit! Get her in the back! Are you alright? Hope! I think so. What? Drive! Move! He just came out of nowhere. You fucking shot him. You shot at him first. A fucking warning shot. You don't shoot a cop. Well, apparently I do. Get us the fuck out of here. I told you I got it. Just drive. You don't give me orders. Fine. Just drive, please. And look for a place to turn off. It's not that bad. Bullet exited cleanly. God, it hurts like a mother... When we stop again, I'll get some antiseptic. Just to clean it up a bit. Where did you learn to do this? Bet. I used to volunteer for a pet doctor. Dogs and shit? <laughs> yeah. Used to clean a lot of shit. But I watched. I held him still while the vet treated him. Well, you got a good bedside manner. When are we stopping? Flynn! What? When are we stopping? We need to get some gauze. You see any pharmacies around here? We're in the middle of the... Well, keep your eyes out for something. I'll keep my eyes out. I'll keep my eyes. He always so friendly? Don't push his button, Sander. He'll... I'm really not afraid of him. Yeah, well, I am. So watch it. Last night. That happened before? It's not as bad as you think. You gonna start making excuses for him, too? My mother I ain't to... your mother. Drop it. What happens when you get to California? You get a job, I guess. A real job. Make some money. I ain't never had a lot of money before, but when I do... Fancy clothes, jewelry. Fuck that. Freedom. Money means freedom, Sander. To do whatever I want to do. If I want to dance, I'll dance. If I don't, fuck that. That's freedom. And you think this import job is legit? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Even if it isn't, there's got to be more options out here. And there's always robbery, right? Bonnie and Clyde kind of stuff? Uh-uh. Not for me. I can't live like this. He gets a thrill. Not me. You can't stay with him. You have no idea. I need to unload his cash. Go find a crap stable. Yeah, sure thing. And Flip. no names. Got it. Come on, let's go get a drink. But he said to... We got time? Come on. My treat. Well then. Two glasses of champagne? Champagne, Mr. Fancy. May as well live it up, right? I don't know, there's something about the vibe here. The sounds, the lights. Pretty girl. Easy scent. Easy, man. Let's just... Uh... Yeah, yeah, sure. Here you go. To Vegas. Lady Luck. Cheers. Hey, this is pretty good. I got a feeling we're going to hit it big. Not just here, but in California. Jobs, connections, big house, big enough for a family. You want a family? Yeah, someday. I want to do it right, you know? Show my old man. I want to do it right. Not me. Raise kids? That kind of responsibility. I mean, what if... Uh Uh-uh. Too scary. I bet you have real pretty kids. A daughter. That someone's gonna mistreat someday? No thanks. 
I got enough to do to take care of myself. You just need to find someone who'll take care of you. Someone who'll... Uh... Come on. Here comes Flynn. Let's go get a craps table. Excellent. Give the chef my thanks. Got a cigarette? I was prepared this time. Sounds like you were falling for the girl. She had this way of crinkling her nose when she talked. In her eyes. She was beautiful, huh? It wasn't that. I mean, yeah, she was. Pretty, anyway. You could tell she'd seen some things. She wore it well, though. Could have been worse. Still. But she was with Flynn. Life throws people together sometimes. Transportation. Get a person from one place to the next. From Jersey to California? To me. We were the same. You ever hear a yin and yang? I don't listen to much foreign music. Funny man. Let's just say we were kindred spirits. Meant for each other. And Flynn was the means to bring you two together. That's what I thought. But not how it turned out. Not by a long shot. She belonged to him. She loved him? Fuck no. And I usually wouldn't say anyone belonged to another person, but, but Hope belonged to Flynn. I didn't see that. I want to count it again. What, don't you trust me, baby? God, I just like to touch it, you know? Oh, I love it when she says that. Ha ha. Yeah, it was a pretty good run. I ain't never seen a run like that. I think Mr. Cobb here is a good luck charm or something. What, him? Yeah, didn't you notice when he went for drinks you started losing? And boom, he comes back with champagne and it's all big eights. I'm sure it's just coincidence. So what? That's luck. All right, sure, he's lucky. We should ride it while it lasts, right? What do you mean? Let's take one more gamble. Big stakes. What do you have in mind? A bank. Uh, just a little one. Me and Mr. Lucky here. You can drive, baby. Uh, yeah, sure. A bank? But they got all kinds of security and shit. Uh, in and out quick. We're not looking for a save. Just a lot of free cash and a quick getaway. Shit. Were you scared, kid? Fuck you. <laughs> Fine, whatever. I'm in. You get to drive? Yeah. You think I can't handle it? No. I think you can handle anything. Hands up, everyone! You, on the floor. Get his gun. Yeah! Down! Now, come on! Draw is empty! Now! No, no. One at a time. Keep your hands up. You, money, all of it, in this. And get out of here and get on the floor. You next. Hurry up. Come on, come on. I said don't move. Hurry up, Flynn. Shut it. Come on. That's it? Shit, on the floor, now. That, that's enough, let's go. No. Time, we Give said... me that. Okay, let's go. Don't fucking move, any of you, you got me? Let's go. Hang on, hang on. Listen to me, kid. You fucked up. It slipped. Slipped my ass. You trying to fuck me over and take my girl? No, man. It was... It was I'll put a fucking bullet in your head if I catch one more whiff of trouble from you. Got me? Now get in the car. Let's go. Can I have one? Where's... Asleep. He wants to kill me. You're playing a dangerous game, Sander. No game. He thinks you said his name on purpose. Yeah. Did you? No. I don't think so, anyway. What else did he tell you? What do you mean? He didn't say anything else? Uh-huh. You don't understand. I understand plenty. 
Those bruises new? Yeah, I understand plenty. Come with me. I can. Yes, you can. Look, Hope, I love you. Stop. I can't. You know it. You can feel it. We're like opposite sides of the same coin. We're... We're... We're nothing, Sander. I'm Flynn's girl. He's my... He doesn't have to be. We can get rid of him. What are you saying? We can get rid of him. For good. I've got it figured out. Sander. We pull another job. While we're inside, you move the car around back. I split and he's left holding the bag. He'll just turn us in. That's stupid. Then I'll have to kill him. Are you crazy? Yeah. Crazy about you. Like you are about me. We need to be together. But... Hope. It's me and you. You want freedom? You'll never get it with him. With me, you'll be free. To live and love and never get hit again. God, it sounds... I don't know. I love you, Hope. Don't you understand? Don't you love... Yes. I guess... Yes. I'm just... Trust me. I can do this. Okay. I trust you. Come on, let's get out of here. One more. Now, we got enough. Go! Get in the car, I'll be right behind you. Son of a... Move! Fuck you, Flynn. Well, you little... (laughs) Under the line for you. What? I got this kid. You! Out of the car, now! I need it, out! The son of a... We can't stay here. I know, I just... It was the right thing. That kid was trouble. Fuck him. But you didn't kill him. You were supposed... It all happened so fast. All right, I'm just... Look, the cops got to have him by now. We just got to lay low. The car? By the time they find it, we'll be long gone. In California? It'll wait. I got a cousin in New Mexico. We can go down there. He scared me, you know. Talking shit about you? He would have left you. Just like he left his own mother. You stick with me. Always. What was... Oh, oh, God! Shit! Oh. Oh, God! Open the door, Hope. You... How? Open oh, the fucking door, Hope. Oh, you son of a bitch. Hello, Flynn. Say, you don't look so good. Fuck you. That's an awful lot of blood you got there. Hurt much? Oh, bastard. Have a seat, Hope. Sander, I, uh... Oh, thank God you're here. He made me... He made me do it. Of course he did. Uh, I only offered you freedom. Oh, Sander, I... Really, sit. I'll get to you in a minute. Is that a kitchenette? What? Uh, yeah. Get me a knife. Something sharp. But... uh, That, that, That steak knife. That'll do. Thanks. Now sit. Let's get out of here. Not yet. Uh, Sander. I said not yet. Oh, God! I, uh, you betrayed me. Uh, 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 He's fucking crazy. He's uh, a lunatic. No, no, no. Uh, crazy is the right word. Uh, you want to see how crazy? Uh, 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 <laughs> Say, that's pretty good. All that lead in your belly and you can still scream. I like it. You're next, my dear. I can put up with a lot, but betrayal, not so much. I think I'll start with your fingers. You certainly don't need those anymore. Oh, no! No, no, no. No no passing out. We're just getting started. But please, try to be quiet. We don't want to disturb the people in the next room. The next? Oh, that's right. You decided to hide out in an abandoned motel. <laughs> nice and quiet, huh? Oh, God. Uh, reminds me of a song my mother used to sing to me. 
I'm a silent night. Oh, please. Come on. You know the words, don't you? Sing along. All is calm. All is bright. just taking her out. A single shot to the temple, but not for betrayal. A quick death is more of a mercy killing, like the one I gave my mother. Guys like Flynn and my father, violence is the only thing they understand. I had to pick them apart, one piece at a time. She had to see what he was made of, every fucking piece of him. I made a watch. Only then, after all the blood, after he shit himself and pissed on the floor, after she was truly free of him, only then could I let her go. Hope? Yeah. And my mother. Her too. That's why you were running. For a while, they treated it like a murder-suicide. A beaten woman fights back, kills a husband, then takes her own life. Son missing, presumed dead. Shit. They eventually caught up with me. <laughs> they didn't take me without a fight, though. Still, after it taken a few in the chest, they put me back together to stand trial. Uh, Should have left me to bleed out. And the public will have its pound of flesh. Wow. Uh, I guess it's pretty much time. Anything else you want, Mr. Cobb? Nah, I'm ready. Bring in the priest. Let's get this over with. I wonder what 3,000 volts feels like. It ain't the volts. It's the amps. (laughs) Come on, Moses! You've been listening to the Oral Traditions production of Sander Cobb, written by Stephen Cardinal and starring Stephen Cardinal as Sander Cobb, Chad Estel as the guard, Greg Gomez as the bus driver, Linda Harvey as the waitress, Scott Kaysen as Ted and the cop, Mary Pumper as Kelly, Cameron Tubbs as Flynn, and Terrilyn Tanner as Hope. If you are enjoying our Oral Traditions productions, please head out to iTunes and leave us a review or a comment. Doing so will help other audio drama lovers find our show. You can also follow us on Facebook or on the web at httporaltraditions.org. Oral Traditions is a production of Straight Talk Entertainment. And that's this week's show. We'll see you next week as we begin October, and that's usually everybody's favorite time for new audio drama. Yes, horror and suspense shows always come out in October in frightful delights. Until we see you then, please contact us at sonicsociety at gmail.com. Look for us at the Facebook group Sonic Society, Electric Vicuna, and Audio Drama Radio Drama Lovers. Also find us on Twitter and let us know how you're enjoying Season 12. Give us a review on iTunes. Until next week, I'm Jack Ward. And I'm David Alt, and we'll see you back here in the society. Good night. Good night. The 
The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. (laughs) (laughs) I'm totally including that. (laughs) You can listen to classical and brand new audio dramas through the Mutual Audio Network. Subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or iHeartRadio today. There's eight different podcasts, one for each day of the week and genre, and the Mutual Audio Network broadcast feed so you don't miss a day of your favorite shows. Subscribe to Mutual Audio tonight. Good night.